Alright, back to Final Fantasy XIV Dawn Trail, The Rite of Succession. Let's do this. Several cutscenes will play. Alright. Let's do this. Accept. Let's see what happens. Acquired twins in the city of Pesach in this short time. Okay. Their unbridled enthusiasm made it difficult. Inwardly, something would catch your eyes. Sparing them to run down an alley to investigate was like herding a pair of unruly curls. I understand all too well. Charlie Ann had the same effect on me. Right then, now it's time we saw the inside of the palace. Papa will want to know my am home and to meet the allies I've chosen. Given how impulsive he is though, there's no telling what he might be in for. Let's go. Let's go pay a visit to uh, the Dawn Servant, right? Is that how you call it? It's, pro it's gonna be, probably going to be a voice cutscene for this, right? I'm assuming it's going to be a voiced a voice scene. Yeah, it's probably voiced. Promising opponent, he invites them to Sun Perch to duel. Pressing duties or no, he can't resist a good fight. So the one Estinian is crossing blades with. Save my darling daughter. Now that you are the strongest I fought in many a moon, if not longer, it is the privilege of a lifelong lived to face such a formidable soul. <laughs> If it's formidable you want, then look no further than that woman there. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty strong. <laughs> hmm. I see you, warrior. We had no idea you meant to visit Taral. I've seen what lies east. This time I chose west. And thus did our itinerant dragoon make his travel plans. You witnessed our bout. If you thought he was fearsome, that was with one head dozing. I'm not sure I understand. The old man has been feeling his ears. The uncovered side is the head of resolve, and age has only deepened his love for combat. But the head of reason, wiser of the two, sleeps more and more these days. As I understand it, 
The veil helps with the restoration of his magical energies. Enough about me, Lamati. I want to hear of your adventures. Lamati? A term of endearment. It's what my family calls me. It's Erinville now, don't serve it. I took the name while abroad, and have since grown accustomed to it. Erinville hmm. then. And these others, I assume, are Lamati's recruited allies. Still, yet as much as I'd enjoy testing their metal, the hour of the right is at hand. I will summon the other claimants at once. Then I shall leave you to it. Good fortune, my friends. Or assemble. The first promise, Zorolja. The second promise, Ona. The third promise, Uklamat. Chosen of Mamuk, Bakun Chacha. You four will compete in the right of succession, the outcome of which will decide who takes my place as Dawn Serpent. I am not the man I once was. My wiser half sleeps the days away. And it is time I yield my position. But mine is a torch that has never been passed. Tuliola is young. And so I look to the always for inspiration. The rite of succession. The means by which the Autark of Mamuk was chosen. Only the two headed were deemed fit for this contest. But the Tuliola I built is a nation of many peoples. Our leader needn't have two heads, nor be a Mamunja at all. <sighs> so I gave the right of claimant not only to the son I sired but to my adopted children as well. Yet the opportunity to rule was still not equal. That is why a recent tournament offered a place in the contest as the winning prize. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
Now you have us to compete against. Oh, though it seems the one head was already too afraid to face us in the tournament. <laughs> Our brother was in shock to Rol leading the Landsguard on a campaign to eradicate a Tural Vidral. Anyone with sense would know he was too busy for games. Now for the part you've been waiting to hear. The nature of the contest itself. to triumph in the right of succession, and thereby claim our nation's throne, you must travel the lands of Yocturol, and find the City of Gold. If I may, Father, Speak, Gorna. The Golden City is an ancient Turali legend, but after so many failed attempts to find it, the story has become more fairy tale than fact. If you would charge us with such a quest, are we then to assume you have proof of the city's existence? Are you for us proof, my unbroken word? For I have seen it with my own four eyes. The city's real. All those years. This was before the founding of Tuliyomal. I traveled the lands of Tural with my companions. And we ended our journey at the gates to the Golden City. I mean to have you do the same, but in order to achieve victory proper, you need to break the seal I put in place. Bring them. So we have to go to the Golden City. Interesting. Okay. and electors will be waiting to measure your worth. Earn their keystones by performing the feats they ask of you. Once you've fitted each of the seven tablets with the keystone, you'll have the key to unlock the seal on the Golden City's gates. So the contest is in stages, none of which can be skipped by rushing to the ultimate objective. Exactly. Exciting, isn't it? Martial tournaments, hunting festivals, and now this? You do so love your contests, Papa. <laughs> Were I a few years younger, I would have joined in myself, giving you a proper challenge. 
You may think the ride is tedious or nonsensical, or both. But I am yielding our nation's throne. Let me have this final indulgence. A waste of time. Just name Bakunja just assessor and be done with it. The rite of cessation begins now. I'll be watching you progress with great interest. And Clement, remember to collect your tablets before you leave. You are one of Lamachi's allies. Speak freely. I am Cryo Baldessian, representative of the students of Baldessian. My name is perhaps familiar to you? Ah. It would seem you sent this letter to my order some years ago. The ink has since faded and much of the writing is illegible. Even so, we managed to determine the essence of it. A request to investigate the Golden City. Addressed to my grandfather, Galuf. Included with the correspondence was this earring. A fairy tale and a piece of jewelry were enough to convince my grandfather to sail halfway across the world. So there is surely some greater mystery at work here. On behalf of the students, I've come to seek clarification on the matter. Have you any knowledge you might share with me? Ha <laughs> No, not at this time. I have tasked the claimants with finding the Golden City. To fulfill your request, would afford one of them an unfair advantage in the right of cessation. But once the contest is decided, I plan to entrust the entire truth to my successor. If you want to hear it, then you have best helped Lamachi win. Very well, Dawn Servant. On my honor as a student of Baldessian, I will find your golden city. Thank you for hearing my petition. My theory is that we're gonna find Galuf at the Golden City. He's probably already there. But he's sealed inside the Golden City because he put a seal on the Golden City, right? So to meet Galuf, we have to break the seal. That. She's grown into a remarkable young woman. You should be proud, Galuf. Now, Galof is probably sealed inside of the Golden City, because the Golden City was sealed, and Galof is probably inside of it, right? Too late to change your mind now, I suppose. But are you sure you wish to be part of this? Our third promise is not one to take no for an answer. Though you may have agreed to help, I worry that you were swept up in her relentless enthusiasm. 
Or perhaps you've been lured by the glory of the Golden City. Either way, this contest for the throne will place you and yours at the heart of political turmoil. If you are second-guessing your decision, tell me now. This may be my last chance to help you with Thrall. Life is a series of journeys, my friend. And there's no telling what awaits us on the long road. But what's important is to be true to yourself as you walk it. Only then can we hope to be content when we arrive at the end of one and step forward into another. I want to see where this journey leads. So you are committed to your path. I will speak no more of it then. As for my own involvement, I can no longer conduct myself as a mere guide, I think. Not after the Dawn Servant's revelation. First promise, our village needs aid. The cold weather stunts our crops, and the children of our village go hungry. Once you ascend the throne, I beg of you, grant my people new lands, please. Sir Elja. Take heart, tiller of the soil. The resilient son, blood heir to the dawn servant, has heard your pleas. Soralcha, the first promise and commander of the Landscape. Soralcha, the Palacea. As he was so careful to remind the crowd, Soralja is indeed the natural child of Gurul Jaja. And Resilient Son, is that another title, like the first promise? After a fashion, common knowledge has it that two-headed Mamulja cannot sire children. Yet Soralja was born all the same, with the head of his soul's features and the head of reason's scales. An extraordinary example of life's unyielding resilience. And a warrior's reticence. He says little, but the way he moves... I know a hardened soldier when I see one. He's a natural swordsman. A gift he inherited from his father. Some even say that the son has already surpassed the sire. Should he come to power, the first promise means to employ that martial prowess in the conquest of foreign lands. For this, he and his supporters have been labeled expansionists. This puts him in direct opposition to Wuklamat, who advocates for the preservation of peace. You may recall that she spoke of a claimant who cannot be allowed to rule. That is Soralja, the warmonger. Kryon, are you all right? <sighs> the echo... It gave me a glimpse into Zoraljar's ambitions. Deep and unknowable, like an abyss. Yet at the same time, a roaring, unquenchable fire. <sighs> it was a trifle terrifying, to be frank.
second promise. You must bring us more marvelous conveniences, more dirigibles and trains and the like. We need you in charge to make trading easier. The elders, they complain and complain about abandoning tradition. But we're not like them, afraid of everything foreign and new. You have our wholehearted support. With your ingenuity and knowledge, you're sure to win the contest. Forgive me, but the right of succession is barely begun. I will hear your petitions if and when I am named Don Servant. If you will excuse me. Plain spoken, as always. <laughs> oh, that's our corner. Practical to a fault. Here we have Kona, the second promise, who spent time as a pupil at Charlian's own studio. Now that you mention it, I think I did see him in the halls once or twice. There was nothing to suggest he was too early, much less from a royal family. That was by design. He forwent his usual garb and took an Eorsian name to avoid attention. So it was Kona who introduced the dirigibles. And the railway too, given what we just heard. In furtherance of his goal, to enrich Tuliolal with every bright notion he learned of in Sharia. He is the hope of those who prize innovation. As aloof as he may seem, Kona and Wuklamat actually get along rather well. They bicker and banter, as only close siblings do. <laughs> How gracious of you all to cheer the lesser Claybots. different from your dawn servant. That my kind should reign is Mamulja tradition, and has been so since before there was a Tuliola. I'll brush aside your feeble contenders, and then you'll see who deserves your fealty. <laughs> well said, brother. Mamulja have finally found peace in Tuliolal. Ah, a pity those fanatics are intent on keeping that tradition alive. The chosen of Mamuk, Bakul Jaja, winner of the recent martial tournament, and the only claimant not of the Dawn's promise. His strength is undeniable, but you see how he is. A few devoted Mamulja are his only supporters. What would he do with the throne should he win it? His policies and so forth. I doubt he's thought much beyond winning the contest itself. But one thing seems certain. If he does become Dawn Servant, he will see the Mamulja exalted as the ruling class and all others forced into subservience. Sounds like another that cannot be allowed to rule.
We wish for one thing and one thing only, Third Promise. To abide together in harmony with our neighbors whom we love in this land we share. It is our way, the Turoli way. Galul Jaja built for us this peaceful nation, and we beg you to preserve it. You have my word. I won't let your pleas go unanswered. Until Tuliolal was founded some 80 years ago, this continent was ravaged by war. The eldest among us remember that dark era, and they are Wuklamat's most ardent supporters. Apologies, it's hard to get away. This is Namika, my childhood nursemaid. She's been like a mother to me my whole life. I told her it wasn't necessary, but she insisted on seeing us off. I place our precious third promise into your care. Did you know Wuklamat was taking part in the Rite of Succession? Of the Dawn's promise? I thought it was only Zoralja and Kona. If she has any accomplishments to her name, I've yet to hear them. Compared to the two Mamulja, she pales in martial prowess. And then there's Kona, who's far and away the most educated of the bunch. I hate to say it, but it's hardly a competition. It's fine. More than anyone. I understand how much better my brothers are than me. Better? Wook Lamart. I have never thought of you as the lesser sibling. Your brothers may excel in their respective ways, but you boast qualities that both lack. A strength that is yours alone. Having cared for you for so long, I should know. Thank you, Namika. Well, we ought to be on our way. Yes, hurry along. I await word of your victory with bated breath. So much for the brief reunion. Papa is not one to waste time when he decides to act. I'm used to it. By now, of course. All we have to work <laughs> All we have to work with are the seven tablets and their connection to the two Yoel saga. When I suggest first comparing the tablets against the pillars, we would check for any discrepancies. Good idea, let's go take a look. Oh god. Oh my god. This is... Oh, I just realized how high up we are. Oh my god. Oh. How high up are we actually? Holy crap. Yeah, yeah. This, this, this city is pretty vertical. It's like a vertical city, right? Pretty cool.
or Clamart to tell us if you would. Of course. Everyone has a tablet, and let's compare. I'm missing something. The glyphs appear to be identical. The only difference being that the tablets have hollows where the keystones are to be fitted. So now that we've established that the scenes are the same, where do we go from here? The dancer friend said we were to retrace the path he walked and united the Charles people. That we would encounter seven electors along the way. And we have the answer here in front of us. Papa's path is laid out in the Toli Olal saga. The events to Glyph's portrait, do we know the exact location where they took place? If one is close, we could go there and search for an elector. That would confirm that we're on the right track. Let me think. The Lay of Reeds was nearby in ha New Hanu settlement. Papa took me there once. It was during the festival season and the whole village was alive with good cheer. There's also the Lay of Gold. That one involved Palupo village, which is about the same distance. Before going anywhere, we should ask around about the road ahead. I heard a lot of talk was toward. Uh, I heard a lot of talk as we turned the city about the storm we passed through its seas. Apparently, it ravaged Yoktural several days ago. Since our roads are not as well paved as yours, yet, may be more suitable to damage from natural disasters. If you want to avoid wasting time taking dead ends, I suggest we spend a few moments making inquiries. If it's information we need, just leave it to me, I'll bring the information to us. We'd be prudent to ensure we've prepared the journey. I'll guide you the accommodations of our range. That's right, the reservation is under Yuklamat's name, if you don't mind. I'll leave my companions to you. Certainly, sir. I'll go ahead, I'll go and track down the third promise. Once you've finished organizing your gear, you can meet us outside Zubal's tea. Greeting visitors to Tuliola, and welcome to the Fora uh, cabins. Whenever you're ready, I will show you to your rooms. So we've got some rooms, nice. we got some cabins.
interest you be keenest to head out? Where are Erenville and Vuklamat, I wonder? Oh good, you're all here. Who might your companions be? Seeing as we need information, I thought who better to get it from than the locals. These two hail from the villages we've been taking of to visit. I give you credit for taking initiative at least. What do you mean at least? I'm honored that the deterred promise would seek my advice. I too am happy to answer your questions. Any encounter might be an opportunity to do business. Thank you both for your help. And before we begin, there will be doubtless be other occasions when we need to act independently, so I brought these two for these for the two of you. Well, what's this? It's called a Link Pearl, a gemstone harvested from a special shell. When licked together, they allow people to communicate across trade distances. Is that so? What? A handy thing to have. It'll be much... It'll be very useful on our travels. Speaking of which, I should get back to introducing my two new friends here. Helpful Hanu. Please ask me anything. I'll gladly tell you what I know. Okay, interesting. Interesting. The Tual Saga features a number of Tulal's clans. The two of those, Hanu and Pelipu, have settlements. So I brought a representative of each. As mentioned before, the Hanu are cheerful people who love their festivals. They make their appearance in the Lay of Reeds, and their home the village of Oak Hanu is located in Koza. Kozamakuka. The other smaller fellow is one of the Pelu, a clan of business-minded folk from Urtopaka. They appear in the Lay of Gold and craft all kinds of marvelous goods. Now, as for deciding which village it should visit first, why don't you put an adventurous instinct of yours to work? Oh, we've got two villages. Okay, um, where do we go? Do we go do the Pelu or do we do the Hanu first? Hanu or Pelu? Pelu or Hanu? Let's do Hanu. Quest to Yukopaka will become available. Yes, let's do this. So what we'll like to know. The road to Ukanu. We go south through the Arch of Dawn, then follow the road which runs alongside the river, right? It is. Be warned, however. My Breton tell me a recent storm has rendered the path even muddier. Far worse was the destruction visited upon our homes. If you do still plan to going, I must urge you to proceed with caution. Well, be sure to watch our footing. Thank you. Now I'm worried for Hanu. It sounds like they are a bit hard by that storm. We'll be back to talk you in good time, Master Merchant. Meanwhile, you can eat and drink your feel at Ixball's Ix tea. It's been arranged. Are we all ready to leave? Then onward to Ko uh, Kozamuka. Let's go. Oh, this way. Kosamauka, the land of rainbow terraces. The 
commands the gaze of all who visit without fail. The many-colored marvel. An endless torrent of water cascades over sheer cliffs to shape the wetlands below. To its relentless flow, all life must yield. Together with Wuklamat, we proceeded along the marshy trail, a road upon which the Dawn Serpent and his comrades once traveled. Yeah, it looks amazing. Look at that water, man. The water. The water, holy shit. Look at the water. As you can see, Tolihiola does not want for natural water. Yeah, the water is amazing. I love the water. Yeah, it's amazing water, actually. The water is like. The ground is swampy, so watch your step. You wouldn't want to fall into a bog. Yeah, that would suck. That would suck me in, right? I don't want to go in there. Eee. That bog. Come on. Let's go. Let's go see the bird people. Alright, let's go, let's apply my mage outfit. Let's do that. Perfect. All the recommended stuff, let's go. I'm a mage outfit for adventuring. Let's go! Adventure! Oh, wait. There's no stopping the third promise, is there? A good thing she has Arendelle to keep her from getting lost. For all his grumbling, he's certainly there for her. Everyone should be so lucky. To have such a loyal childhood friend. Right, let's get moving. If we continue along this road, we should find ourselves to the village before long. Ah! What the heck is that thing? A new lawn. Okay, that thing was scary. It just charged straight at me. Well, our everyone has arrived, and none for worse were wear, except for a certain third promise who slipped in the mud. Hey, I asked you not to say anything. Anyway, this is the Hanu Hanu village I was talking about. All right, let's do the first task. Let's do it. It's like our friend said, the people are in no mood for festivities. I can only assume they are still recovering from the damage of the storm. Indeed, well, let's do what we can. Came and do and find the selector. Oh ho, Kali. Oh ho, what now? It's a Hanu greeting. Surely you heard it last time you were here. Well, I was busy enjoying the festival. <laughs> Greetings to the third promise in Antarjaj. I, Zanu Hali, welcome to Oh Karu. As elder of my people, I shall also be fulfilling the duties of Elector during the Rite of Succession. So our idea, so our idea about the Elector is correct. We just go uh, do as Papa said and retrace his path from the saga. I'm ready. Give me that feat and test of my, my worth. All in good time. All in good time. In fact, I came to let you know that we are not quite ready to begin. 
For the moment, please enjoy the hospitality. Should we poke around a bit then? We might pick up some clues about the feet. You know, prepare ourselves. That's surprisingly prudent of you. What do you think? I'm being too cautious? No, 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 I'm impressed is all. You admire and respect your father, who is prone to decisive action. So I expected you to rush. I do look at, up to Papa, but you should know that he has a pragmatic side too. The head of reason is the tinker, who takes time to consider all the possibilities. With the long naps he takes these days, though, the head of resolve is less restrained by his wisdom. I can't fault you for thinking that's all there is to him. But there's more to the Dawn Servant than you've seen. I should like to speak with the Head of Reason one day. Ah, oh, well, I'm sure you'll catch him awake soon enough. To return to the subject at hand, you wish to take a look at Oak Hanu, then. Do some groundwork before the feat begins. Something like that. I mean, I could probably pass this test with my eyes closed, but it'll keep us busy. Uklamat has the right of it, as Elder Zuhali in the village. Learning more about it can only improve our chances. Alright, well, that sounds good to me. storm? I've never seen the likes of it before. The supplies and help the Dawn Service sent? We're making progress. But while roofs and walls can be patched, there's so much else that was lost. A lot of the houses are still damaged by the Andohanu I've spoken to are not their usual cherry shells. There must be something I can do to help them. I'm going to look around. Okay, Wuklamat, see you later. So it's on the other way, the other way, okay. I see. Oh, I should have tuned to the crystal, yeah, yeah. Let's go. I'm aware.
No sign of Zorolja or that oversized lout. How much easier it would be if Soroja were to fail here. But that isn't likely to happen. Honored guests, I am Zanu Hali, elder of the Hanu. I am also an elector, charged with judging which among you is worthy of ascending the throne. Without further ado, let us talk of the feat. Not so fast. Surely you couldn't begin without us. Eh, you made it after all. No need to fuss. There is no time limit for this challenge. Now, if you would allow me to proceed... It is here, in Okanu, where my people forged a bond with the Dawn Servant during our own chapter of the Tuli Yolal Saga. In homage to those events, I have prepared for you the Feet of Reeds. Reeds seem to be of great importance to the Hanu. I wonder what this feat entails. We use reeds in every part of our lives, be it as food or weaving material. But look around the nearby paddies, and you will see that this season, our crops are failing. How fortunate, then, that my appointment to Elector coincided with this predicament. For surely, those who aspire to be Dawn Servant would find the matter of an ailing harvest a mere trifle to resolve. Aye, well, it is indeed the duty of a ruler to address the people's woes. <laughs> exactly, exactly! Do well in this, and you will earn my keystone. Why bother mucking about in the mud, when we can take the stone by force? Oh, mercy me! You are a hot-headed fellow, Bakul Jaja. Some electors may enjoy going toe-to-toe -to -toe with scrappers like you, but I refuse to entertain your base instincts. Arrangements have been made. Should you attempt to engage a feat giver in combat without their consent, word of your immediate disqualification will be sent to the palace. If you're still feeling feisty, then by all means, draw your weapon. <laughs> this contest is presided over by cowards. There's no sport in fighting you. Then we can return to the business of earning my keystone. The feat of reeds is begun. Claimants, I wish you the best of luck. The clever kitty crossed the seas to study foreign novelties. He might know tricks we don't. Tricks we can use. What of little Miss Mittens? <laughs> you know the answer to that. Compared to the first and second promise, she's a distant third. 
not even in the running. Then we see eye to eye on this brother. Being Bakul Jaja so long with me has rubbed off on you. <laughs> These allies of hers, though, they might be a problem. Damn it! I'm just as qualified to be here as they are. I'll show them. Easy now. There's no time limit, remember? Let's keep calm and think things through. Right. You're right. I won't win against that lumbering vidrol by losing my head. Yeah, we can do this. First thing about farming, but if there's a way to save the harvest and help the Hanu, then we're going to find it. Yeah, we're gonna do it. I'll make my cool Jaja eat his words. Hmm. Understanding the nature of the problem will be the key to solving it. We need to examine the reeds. Yorville, will you take us to the field? Of course. Stand back, I'll get to the bottom of this problem. In no time. Okay. Give me strength, that's all off scout and field and help out bold leader. Soon enough, I'll call everyone together and we can share our discoveries. Well, what do you think? Any obvious problems? I agree, the water looks to be good quality, as does the mud, in which the reeds have been planted. 
frogs the frogs and insects are unusual to start, but this shows a problem is affecting not only the reeds but also the creatures. Could something invisible to the naked eye be polluting the water? We should need an alchemist to know for certain. I don't have much to add about the fields, but something else occurs to me. When you were describing how the creatures seem lifeless, I can help but be reminded of all the listless villagers. They suffered terrible tragedy, I know, but there is no reason for their flagging spirits, I believe. Go on. The festival is traditionally an occasion for celebration and renewal, so without it, the Hanu are struggling even more to recover. Last time we visited, the village has in the middle of festivities. It's an indispensable part of their culture, and its absence will completely it will only compound their woes. So I say we help them put our their festival, give them a reason to cheer up. Who knows? Maybe fixing one problem could lead to us a solution for another. I don't know about that. This is so strange an idea. I also feel the relation between festivals and fields. Let's not be too hasty in diminishing the idea. Things which seem unrelated can later prove to be connected. True, and being bereft of ideas as we are, any proposal worth entertaining? I suppose. Besides, this is Wuklumach's journey. It's only right that we follow her lead. Ah, oh, thanks everyone. By the way, does anyone know where the festival float is? It's like a boat woven from reeds. Yeah, we saw it in the village. Ah, in that building to the north. Let's go see it. It's missing an eye. There's an eye missing. And what else?
Oh yeah, it's missing one. There's one missing. Festival float. It's a shame it's such in poor taste due to the recent storm, I gather. Yes, we had to leave it exposed while we ushered our people to safety. With the float in this condition, there can be no lifting of wings. No leave Han Hana. Leave Hana, that's what the festival was called. I want to help you hold it. Have you not seen our villagers? Homes are ruined. We're struggling to make repairs, and you want us to hold our harvest festival? I know what it sounds like, but giving into misery never improved anyone's situation. A celebration of life and growth may help give you the strength to walk through this tragedy. The role of a festival leader is mine this year, and there's nothing I would like more than to lift your one's spirit. But we don't even have enough materials to repair the float. We need up no kinixa for the manx eye, huge of wood for the poles, and fetters from the winds chosen to adorn the tail. Two of these I know. I understand the type of precious stones was New York and Nilman. However, these children is the victor of the competition dis in which is your contestants. Okay. We Hanu are gifted at employing such resources. Alright. Interesting. I think I understand your verdant needs grow quickly, vigorously, so much so that they strifle in development of the nearby plants. They must be a potent source of the energies you naturally lack. Here indeed, owing the poor harvest this year, we've been lift up and overrated. Now if we cannot gather the correct materials, as dictated by the custom, we cannot repair the fell with load. Oddly enough, we may have just doubled it on our solution. The winds chosen would be necessary would, would be by necessity have a natural gift for manipulating magical energies. Which means any fetters taken from the victor should be high atrial conductivity. The float's construction also requires a stone used in arcane equipment as well as timber favored for several tools. Demand for such specific materials must have been underlying reason. And the float might also function as an arcane device? Precisely what I was thinking. This boat of reeds is in fact an arcane focus of some kind. Focus for what? Oh, Luna, yeah. is Harvest Festival... Isn't it? That must mean the float was made to encourage the healthy crops. So if we repair the boat and hold the festival, its arcane powers might fix what's going on with the reeds. Well known until we try, but it's sound theory, celebration, prayer, ritual, ceremonies. These have all been known to elicit miraculous effects. Wait, 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 the float is a tool for magic? This is the first time hearing of it. In the beginning, it may well not have been. After a good harvest year, there would be no need to change it, but when the harvest was poor, new adornments were likely added. And those who performed the labor may have imbued their work with ardent hopes for a brighter future. Through years of trial and error, the Hanu would have refined their festival float into a focus for harvest prayer. Incredible. I know you're practically fainting from hunger, but reviving Ildhana really does sound like the solution to all your woes, and I promise we'll do everything in your power to help you. I'm still not convinced about this focus business, but I accept your aid. He's replaced both the eyes and the poles before, so he should know where and how to procure what you need. And I'll Alice and I to acquire the fighters. We will encourage the people of Wakanda to gather and vie for the title of the wins chosen by sharing with them our own reserves of mana. I'll go with you. If I carry some alchemical brews, then I may afford some effect. Let's do this. Let's gather the materials, everyone.
Well, let's go. Let's go get the materials. Not well me, I've worked hard to fix the float. Best I can, and the responsibility is all mine. I've not introduced myself. My name is Linu Hanu. Nice to meet you, Linu Hanu, and certainly. Let's all together. Experience and knowledge are valuable assets, but there's something to be said for following one's instinct. <laughs> the shipwright's name is Wook Ibu. He's at Izikbral. Only moved to Kozamuka a few years ago, but has since mastered our customs. He's actually strict when it comes to matters, so make sure that offer him proper Hanu Hanu greeting. Proper Hanu, hold that one. Don't worry, I remember how it goes. But we shouldn't have any problems. Let's head to Oak Beck to the east of here. This is Okbek, the village of all. Those who drift into Koatsamuka from Tuluyolal and elsewhere are welcome to live here alongside the Hanu. Alright, let's go check over there. There's no way to grant here, right? No, it's down south somewhere there. Okay. This is pretty high up. Look, ooh, ooh, there it is. Hmm. What do you want with me? Right. A greeting. Ohokali. Ohokali. <laughs> okay, this is nice. Good. You brought your manners with you. When you know Kanu, do as the Hanu do. For a country as diverse as ours, the preservation of harmony demands that we respect the cultures of all peoples who call it home. Well, that explains your familiarity with Hanu customs. And you speak truth, of course. To live together means to learn about each other. Ah, I appreciate an open mind. In fact, I get the sense we've met before.
You! You woke Lamont! Oh, what an unexpected honor for old Wokevu. Here I am prattling on about manners, and I've gone and insulted the third promise herself. There is no excuse for this betrayal of etiquette. Please, take up your axe and claim my <laughs> Not. Your head. Oh my god, that's funny. <laughs> I hate formalities anyway, so forget about it, alright? Alright then, consider it forgotten. How prompt. <laughs> oh my god, that was funny. That was funny. It's in bad shape and we need you to craft new carrying poles and a new eye. I'm <laughs> that you was what funny. <laughs> oh my god. Kind of stone? Uh, I did not expect that at all. That I do. <laughs> oh my but, god. Well, I would like nothing more than to offer my services. <laughs> I just used the last I had of both those materials. My lumber in particular went to fixing oh holes damaged by the recent okay, storm. Okay, that was funny. Oh, I'll need 10 oh days or so god. to oh, restock. I can't wait that long. If you tell me where to go, I'll gather them myself. What? Send the third promise out on an errand like some common lackey? That's utterly unconscionable. A gross violation of social protocol. I told you not to worry about such things. All right then. I shan't worry a whit. What's with your Hanu friend there? I am festival leader this season, and have come along to oversee the float's repair. As strange as it may sound, Wuklamat and her friends believe the float is an arcane focus, meant to encourage the growth of our struggling reeds. Mm. Too many Hanu have forgotten, it seems. But that is indeed the true purpose of the lifting of wings. Your education is impressive, Third Promise. Well, maybe a little. Allow me to show you where to procure Oyuipo. We can leave the Abokisha to your friends, I presume? Take yourself to Cave Kikitola, or thereabouts, and you should find the stones you need. I've been there once or twice. I can guide you. That should save us some time. All right then, let's get moving. Chosen one. One of your rivals is making progress. Ah, Ihiana, you say? <laughs> Should our first choice fail to deliver, it might be wise to let this play out. <laughs> <laughs> the third-rate promise is making herself useful after all.
Cave Kikirutola, southwest of Okanu. We can return to the village first, then head there foot. Southwest of here, was it? Let us be on our way then. I'll use my mech and walk there. Cave Kikitola, as promised. Home to many, many deadly creatures. Venture inside if you feel confident, but I will conduct my own search out there. You can spot a rock to bike its green hued glimmer. Okay, let's go. I shall scout inside the cave. You take the west. Alright. Southwest? Where is it? Three hundred eight southwest. Look further down this way? Oh, it's probably above me, but I can't get there, right? Picked over the ground near the entrance, but found nothing. Did you have better luck in the cave? I found this thing here. Here we go. Ah, yes, Amnosia, along the Kral's contribution. We have more than enough. The stones you've brought shine brightly. Thank you both. We've been happy to know we were putting things right. Truth be told, a good friend of mine was meant to be the festival leader for this. But when that big storm hit, he did not survive. It fell to me to carry on his stead. That was my uh, why agree. That's why that was why you agreed to Clement's request, despite your initial reluctance. Yes, it hurt to hear, but she was right. Though I must mourn, I cannot let my grief consume me. Her words made me realize that the path of my recovery, our recovery, is already laid before me. Thank you for sharing your story with us. Please rest assured that we'll do what we. Please rest assured that we've taken your plight to heart. I'm certain your companions are procuring the other materials. Everything will come together. That we shall. With that, let us return and deliver the Agnoxia into Roku's weighing hands. Going up the stairs on a car. This is pretty high up. Tower. 
Well, actually, it's not a tower, it's a big tree, but yeah. It's her promise in her mighty swings. We've collected some suitable logs in your boat. Whatever else, yeah. Here we go. Yes, these are excellent. A good quantity, too. This stranger likely surmised that the lefty, lifting wings encouraged the crops to grow, but not exactly how, eh? Well, you're in for a treat. All goes to plan. The result should be spectacular. Now, to get to the work crafting these pieces to throw a float, I could use an assistant. First in arcane arts. And I'd be delighted to help. Everyone else should head back to Okanu. We'll join you once the float the float once the, the work here is complete. Gathering the Yupo, what is the trivial in and of itself? At first, Wook Ivu criticized everything I did. Then he suddenly yelled, I've spoken ill of the third promise and must punish myself, and proceeded to slam his head on, into the Yupo tree. I told him not to worry about it, and again was like snuffing out a candle. Candle, and he's an odd one, that's for sure. At least we've seen to the poles and the new eye. Now we just have to wait for the fetters. Alright, let's go. There's a prayer for Holy Crap, but does she honestly believe that it will be enough to save our harvest? I can promise me I'll barely glance at the fields before leaving Okahanu altogether. Maybe you asked too much of our young claimants. Well, I wouldn't be too quick to count Kona out. A friend of mine overheard him muttering by the reeds, something about what needs to be done. Is that so? Perhaps we'll get to see another of his innovation. Oh, that sounds like our koana. One look at the reeds was all he needed to find a solution. Be that as it may, our own solution is nearly ready. Indeed, as soon as the others are back, our long-awaited festival can begin. It took some time, but we managed to get our competitors to fight for the title of Winchrow, and the winner was only too happy to donate his feathers. He'd have seen it. He called forth an incredible gust, then sent his fetters sailing through Malms. We had it turn ourselves, but it's more difficult than it looks. Poor Unreal was twirled in the air for a moment. I'm a gleamer. Magic is not part of our training. As for us, we've brought the wood and gemster replacements crafted by Wukubu. All that's left is to attach them. Has it been decided who will ride the float? Papa was the guest of honor the last time I was here. I remember being surprised he could even lift the thing with the hulking wave on top of it. The rider must be a personage of great esteem, which is why an invitation is usually extended to the dawn servant. This time, however, I have another in mind. Ah, who is it? You, our beloved Lidana, the lifting wings is only being held because of you. And are your companions? Does I nominate you, Buklamat, as our guest? On me. This boat won't make me seasick, will it? <laughs> I don't think so. Then wave anchor, I can hardly refuse a request from one even more enthusiastic about the festival than me. I would be delighted to ride the float. 
Thank you, Utama. I have rolls for the rest of you as well. We'll be carrying the festival float in slow procession towards Kozaku. What a sacred likeness of Kir. Kixara is in source. What I'd like you to do is clear a path of dangerous wildlife so that the procession can move along. Consider it done. Expect me to sit still until Wukovu is finished with the float. Let me come along. As you know, I'm not much for fighting. I'll stay behind and assist Wukovu with the repairs. If you aren't sure where you need to go, the path I spoke of begins to south of the village. Branches off to the east. That will lead you across to bridges. Then we shall see to clearing it on the, the, on the end. Let's go. said, Kozanuaki should be down this way, and off to the east. Anyway, let's split up and get to work. Ah, you were a step ahead of us. This must be the likeness of Kiksalhi. The Hanu Hanu deity of the harvest. 
You know, secret images are woven of the reeds. Makes you appreciate how much their culture resolves are on the reed harvest, doesn't it? Said that Kiks Zalhi was worshipped on another continent. This ancient faith was then brought to Tuyarral by that first Hanuhan. The Hanu migrated here from their continent may have the two do share a common ancestor. This is all very fascinating, but shouldn't we be getting back to Linuhana? He'll want to know the path is safe for the procession. Right, and I need to ride on the float. I'll run ahead and tell him. Meanwhile in Okaano Meanwhile in Okeanu <laughs> Not sure we heard you right, old man. Why don't you say that again? As many times as you'd like. The third promise tasked me with repairing this lot, and I'll not relinquish it to an uncultured brute like you. Much less one that can't even manage a simple greeting. We wanted to handle this in a civilized way, but we're more than willing to <laughs> kill you. We have a two-headed problem. Yes, please hurry. She's on her way back already? Stand back, Wukevu! I will protect the float! <laughs> Are you trying to be brave, little bird? I could never have repaired the float alone. Not properly. But thanks to Wuklamat and her friends, we can hold Ihihana again! This is a priceless treasure! And as festival leader, I would die to protect it! Uh, very well, if that's what you want. Akuchacha! <laughs> For you to understand the gulf between us. But you need more lessons. We'll carve them into your mangy hide until you cry and beg forgiveness. Your brilliant plan was to steal the float and take the credit. The so-called blessed siblings are nothing but cheats! <laughs> Your scorn is sweet music. Come, weaklings! We'll crush you each in turn! Or all together, if you like. Calm yourself, chosen one. If you fight in earnest, this will end in a massacre. What's more, we have word that our other prospect is on the verge of success. Hmm... Then it would be foolish to expand effort, swearing nuts. <laughs> Lucky for you. Eh. Two heads. 
I see Mamook still clings to that loathsome hope. Talk to us, Third Promise. You're not dying, are you? <laughs> It'll take more than that to kill me. So, are we having this festival or not? Yes! Yes, we are! Thank you for coming to our rescue. I tried to protect the float, but against that two head, I may as well have not been there. Nonsense, you stood your ground and brought us time. We needed to make it back. You were incredibly brave. With that exciting interlude, you'll be pleased to know that my repairs are finished. Before we commence the festival, however, it would be a courtesy to inform the villagers that Ilhana will be held after all. Go forth and do not forget our greetings. At this stage, I should hope the remainder is unnecessary. Oh, Kali, they see, I remember. Ilhana, this feels so empty. Oh, Kali. Oh, Kali. Thank you for letting me know. I would be much like to attend the festival. The festival's about to begin, what do you expect me to say? Besides, of course, I'll be there. Cleaning the storm's aftermath may have been hard on us. I won't sit there and brooding all day. Give me a moment to get ready. is fixed, our fallen friends would be glad to know that Ildana will soon be underway. They would have wanted us to honor them with celebration, not let their loss deter us. I must go and enjoy the festival for those who no longer can. The Hanu were pleased to hear the festival was going ahead, I imagine? Yes. As well. Once your friends return, the lifting of the wings can begin. Underway. No Hanu will be able to resist joining in. Just so. 
Ukewu knows well the heart of the Hanu. Have faith, Third Promise, and climb aboard the float. It is time for the lifting of wings. Right. Off we go. Ikihana is a prayer for bountiful harvest. But this is not its only meaning. It is also an exchange of pledges between rider and bearers, a commitment to a long and fruitful friendship. Listen well, friends! The personage we bear today is Wu Klamat, the savior of our beloved festival! Let your shoulders burn, or your feathers fall out! But do not even think of dropping her! Ready and... <laughs> I could get used to this. Day that Dawn's promise would ride our boat again. <laughs> We've not had the honor since you were here, Gulul Jaja. Right. We've enough bearers now. Onwards to Kozaduaki! Watch well, for you are about to bear witness to the true glory of Ihihana! The float draws upon our life force, concentrating and amplifying the energy. Shaihi then receives that energy and expels it in a great burst. worked like a literal charm the float really was helping the reeds that was amazing 
To think that such a thing was even possible! behind like that. I'm so excited for to see the reeds. Doesn't even worry, let herself over. My brush shouldn't have been swept up by the festival. They were taking turns at the carrying the poles on the way back. Please feel free to look over the fields and enjoy the sight. That was pretty fun. Some of them still look a bit sickly. I imagine even the harvest magic has its limits. If the Hanu continue their festival tradition year after year though, the entire field should eventually recover. Where does that leave us with the feet then? You've got nothing to fear on that account. Our situation could never have resolved itself. The revival of even a single reed would have served to demonstrate your commitment to the task. That you recognized the nature of the float and found a near perfect solution in Ihihana proves your dedication. What's more, I don't think I've seen the festival produce such impressive results since I was a mere chirper. Ah, we have been lax in maintaining the float, diluting its magic and reducing Ihihana to hollow theater. I was delayed by an unpleasant encounter, but it seems I arrived at a good time. Isn't that wonderful? What? You just pour in some mystery liquid and problem solved? Stagnant ether was to blame for the reed's poor condition. I assumed that was an alchemical concoction which enhances ethereal conductivity. It utilized the flowing water as an ethereal current, thereby promoting the transfer of life energies. A method I could not have devised without the education I received at the studium and the cooperation of my Archon allies. Archon allies? You see, Lamachi, this is why we need to embrace foreign knowledge and technology. Employed appropriately, they make light work of what would otherwise be arduous labor. There's no need to lug around heavy floats. Well, you always were the clever one, brother. Your approach was no less effective, Wuklamart. It achieved the same result. Indeed it did. And you enjoyed the festival, yes? I did! It was so much fun! Having visited your village before, I thought I knew everything about it. As it turns out, I knew very little. About the reeds, about Ihihana. 
With all I've learned this time, I feel as though I've really come to know the Hanu. And I like you even more now than I did before. The feeling is mutual. And it's not just you who had a lot to learn either. I'll never look at our float the same way again. The two of you have exceeded expectations. Come forth and claim your stones. So this is what they look like. Go on, set it in the tablet. <laughs> A perfect fit. That leaves six more. And on to the next. Not even a moment of celebration. That's Kona for you. A third promise? You must join us for Ikikana next season. As Dawn Servant, of course. Right. It's back to Tulihiola for now. Thank you for having us. I look forward to seeing you all again. What about your book? What about the other guy? <laughs> These are interesting times indeed. Yeah, what about him? What is it? What's his plan? The concoction was brewed by Kona himself. It's a test vial, but it should contain the same reagents. Good work. We'll use whatever we must to win. For win we must. Okay, he's gonna he he's gonna use the same thing Kawana did just to win. I mean at least he's gonna get his stone. <laughs> he's gonna get his stone, but he kinda cheated for it, you know. My journey has just started already. I've met so many wonderful people. Who give you for one, he's a bit eccentric, but everyone could have stand be as respectful for other cultures as he is. Alimu Hanu, it warmed my heart to see him honor his departed friend. Ildehana and to help others do the same. I can't help but feel excited thinking who else I might meet over the course of the contest. Come on, let's head back to Ixbel the Tea. Just like that, we found a lector and won. Our first keystone. I knew I was right to trust your instincts. Come, let's keep things moving and march onwards to Ukopakas. Chances are good we'll find an elector there as well before we do anything. However, we should see what our opportunistic Pelu friend has to say. Right, well, next time, we're gonna go check the Pelu village. See you next time on more Dawn Trail. <laughs>